Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this video is a continuation of my series on unexpected joy at dawn. Unexpected joy at dawn. We've covered um the whole of part one and we've covered part two from chapter one to chapter five. So I'm gonna start from chapter six of part two. Chapter six. Mama is with the queen mother as they live their old friendship days and called each other by their nickname Scola. The queen mother wanted to show mama her plantation and other places including meeting her brother. But mama refused, maintaining that she had to see her own brother need that day, but promised to come back the next day to see everything she had to show her. After mama had her bath in the queen mother's place, she wore a dress that made the queen mother to tell her that she still loves Ghana and asked if she made the clothes by herself. She tells her that a Ghanaian friend in Nigeria did. The Queen Mother is surprised that there are still Ghanaians in Nigeria. Tali O, Joe's friend, is in Bayerman, urging Joe to join him to the mines because he is in their need of money as his bank account has been frozen by the government. As he kept pressing Joe to join him to the mines, Joe asked him to go to the Bayes. By his restaurant and have some food to enable him calm down. Tali O kept talking about going to the mines, but Joe is apprehensive. He tells him he is going back to his office after they've had the meal. Aaron, Nee, and the carpenter were taken to the farm by the caretaker, medical caretaker, to work. Nee got some blisters from the fire that burnt the wood they had gathered. The roasted cassava which they ate as Ni nee and Aaron talked about the anti project which Aaron said is his life and is still on course to actualize it. They spent time in the discussion and couldn't finish the work before the caretaker who had gone out returned. Ni nee, realizing they've officially become slaves, suggests they plan their escape. Chapter seven The Corporal meets Joe at the door and researches his plan on how to deliver the minerals to the customer at the airport since he would be on duty that day. Mama meets Joe and explains she was in Bayerman in search of her brother, Ni. Nee. They also talked about the booming gold business in Lagos and the difficulties in beating the security. Joe suggests the export of diamonds be made with Paros this time. The minerals will be stuck in Paros' belly and this will avert any sort of suspicion. When the discussion about gold and parrot was over, they headed to Espen's bank. Joe wanted to tell Mama that he loved her, but coward. When they got to the bank, they were informed Nee was on leave, and Mama was given a letter from the hospital's mortuary where Master's body was deposited, asking that they come and take her corpse out. A messenger was asked to take them to Nee's house. After visiting Nee's apartment, they headed to the hospital and was told by the nurse that Ni nee abandoned his wife's corpse with them. She also reveals that Ni nee and Masa were going to a spiritual home before Masa died on their way. Mama and Joe went to the spiritual home that has the inscription, God is beyond science. They were told that Ni nee said he would be going to Nigeria. Mashak went to see Ni nee in Miliki. She encouraged him to do something about his condition because a Nigerian ought to live like a Nigerian. She gave him a pair of jeans and don't know when he said he needed money badly. Mama and Joe took Masa's corpse to Sampa village. They were well received and Masa was buried peacefully. The villagers were grateful to them for bringing her back to Sampa. After the burial, Joe confesses his love to Mama and proposed to marry. Mama accepted as... She's tired of being lonely. Masa's mother was grateful to Mama as they hugged each other. Ni nee goes to visit Mashak in the hotel room where she lives. They hugged and were getting intimate with each other until they were interrupted by a young boy of about 15 years old who has come to patronize Mashak and the hotel proprietor who has also come to sleep with Mashak. Ni nee got very angry at the life she lives, to the extent that she also sleeps with a boy as young as 15 years old. In Bayerman, Joe tells Tali O that his next visit to the manse 
would be his last as he wants to invest in something Lego because he's getting married. Talio tells him to be careful of the tribe he was getting married. Joe visits the bank and briefs the manager of their visit to Koforido Mortuary. In his office, that is in Joe's office, he makes a note by Talio saying he would be leaving for the mines earlier than his colleagues. In the hotel room where Mama slept, she was wakened by the hotel security. She quickly rushes through her morning routineries. After being checked at the reception, she hurries out as she's late for a meeting with Joe. Joe tells the Bayama restaurant proprietor about his intentions to get married and his decision to stop mining illegally but rather do it legally if the new mineral law that allows private operators is passed. He tells him that his name, that is the Bayama restaurant proprietor's name, is accepted by his colleagues and would be a director if he agrees to pay the share capital of a hundred thousand pounds. The Bayama restaurant proprietor tells him that they ought to be careful of the name I put it to me as it carries a death mark on all of them. Mama Miss Joe, who was already waiting in his office, Joe inquires about her family. She told him that her parents were dead and that their marriage would be blessed by Amen Christie. She further explains that that is the name of the church she belongs. He gives her a ring, which looks exactly like the one she bought from my put it to me. He takes her home. Joe carefully puts the diamonds and goes in the parrot he had earlier bought to help be security at the airport. At the airport, Mama went through the cargo formalities without the least bother. They waved each other goodbye but found it difficult to let go. Nee visits Masha to apologize for his behavior during their last meeting. He met her surrounded by her friends on her bed. He spotted a chamber pot filled with blood and he tried lifting Masha off from the bed to take her to the hospital and discovered she was already dead. Masha's friends believe that Masha died trying to abort a pregnancy. Ni believes she committed suicide and blamed himself for not being able to understand Masha and not being able to give her the support she prayed for. Tali O goes to the mines at night and a lot of other illegal miners were at the site mining gold and diamonds. Tali O unfortunately was shot on his shoulder and couldn't make it out alive. Joe was lucky to escape being caught or shot. In Nigeria, Mama goes to the chairman's house, to the church chairman's house. There she meets other executive members of Amen Christie, including Tom Monday, whom the chairman says joined the church because of her. He tells her about a recent robbery in the area and blames it on aliens. Mama tells them about her intentions to get married. The chairman and an elder opposed it. In fact, he vehemently opposed it on the basis of tribe. Mama threatened to um, propose his removal from the council if he opposes um, her marriage to Joe. She also threatened to withdraw her support from the church. Tom Monday, who couldn't withstand the situation, proposed marriage to Mama. Mama laughed. The old man encouraged her to consider Tom Monday's proposal, but she ignored him. The hotel proprietor instructed the attendants not to open room 7, which is Mashak's room. The immigration officers came and arrested the other girls and couldn't let them take their stuff. The proprietor ordered for a coffin to be constructed, which they used in burying Mashak in a shallow grave. As Ni, Aaron, and the carpenter who had joined in Berry Masha go to Miliki, they demanded from the caretaker to be paid. As they got their pay, they set out to Lagos. The caddy bodied, charged 24 naira for the three of them. They begged the driver to accept 20 naira, but he refused until the passenger augmented the amount. When they alighted, they helped the stranger that augmented their fare to carry his bags. He introduced himself as Kwaku, also known as KK, and they all introduced themselves. Kwaku suggests that they join him to Ngoni, which is a total slum, since they've not decided where they were going. They joined a bus 
that would take them to Ngoni and had to jump out of the vehicle when they got to their bus stop while the vehicle was still moving. Mama goes to the council secretary's house who approved of her intentions to marry Joe but blamed her for not knowing if Joe is a Christian or not. The book also was on Mama's side. The doctor, who is a member of the council, is not on Mama's side. The pastor, the chairman, they all voted against Mama's marriage to Joe. Mama leaves them and Ibuk follows, including the secretary. Joe is at the airport for a Lagos flight. The corporal, who was supposed to deliver the parcel, that is gold and diamond, to a customer, was followed by two men. Joe has seen them from a distance and believes the corporal has been caught and is being arrested. As he was trying to go on board, he was stopped and handed a parcel which contains gold and diamonds and a letter from his friend who was at the mineral board saying that the cabinet had given preliminary approval for the privatization of mining. The next item in the letter reveals that the proprietor of Bayer's restaurant, who was earlier arrested, had been released due to lack of evidence. Joe is now happy and relaxed. I'll be ending today's episode here. The next one is going to be the last episode on this novel. Thank you for watching and see you very soon in the next one. Bye for now.